time of year so I wanted to make this video for two reasons one because I thought that it would be fun to make cookies with you and two for an opportunity to properly introduce myself since I started this vlog in England and my whole packing while writing a book and journey from the UK to the US and moving into this apartment I feel like unless you know me from my main channel where I discuss uh, my books and publishing and writing, then you won't really know who I am. So I thought <laughs> that it would be a good idea to bake some cookies while answering some questions about me. Now, where did I get the questions? I will also post uh, the link to the questions down below. If you ever want to interview an author or want to make a video like this and don't know what to say about yourself, I found these questions online, so I'm just gonna go through them as I bake. Now, about the cookies. <laughs> It is a tradition for me to always bake these apple cinnamon cookies during the month of September because I celebrate Maybon. If you don't know what Maybon is, um, it is a pagan holiday where we celebrate the harvest and it is all about thanks. Actually, it was the original Thanksgiving, so I won't give you a history lesson. I have a lot of questions to answer, so... <clears throat> I'll spare you all of that, but you can totally Google it. Um, and yeah, I am pagan, so it is something that I always do every year. And then my husband gets to enjoy and indulge in these delicious sweets. Let's get into it. We prepped a little bit of this. My husband did help me so that I didn't take forever to get started on baking the cookies. The recipe calls for a cup of apples uh, chopped but I will again, like the, you can find the recipe right under this video so you don't have to like take notes or anything like that. Just have fun and watch. Um, but if you like, I can just read out real quick what the recipe entails. And that is apple, uh, granulated sugar, brown sugar, eggs, butter, vanilla extract, flour, of course, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So. I will get right into answering the questions and bring this in a little bit closer because I am blind. That is not one of the questions, but <laughs> I might as well tell you I do have an astagmia in my eye and um, it's just hard for my eyes to focus and see from far away. So yeah, I need like everything up close. I am like this when I type. It's, it's really bad. It's really bad. So, all right, I want to get started with the baking first. So the recipe wants me to peel and dice uh, one cup of apples. And I want to go ahead and do that first since everything else is already prepped. And uh, again, because I just moved, I don't really have a lot of materials right now. And I kind of like went out to buy some stuff for this project. Um, so I'm missing a larger bowl and you know, this is gonna be my carving knife. So, I mean, that's fine, no, that's fine. So, okay, first question. What inspired me to start writing? Questions, what inspired you to start writing? I, I think my mom, um, I wanna say my mom inspired me to start writing. Um, she is a teacher and she's also always been a writer. She got me interested in Edgar Allan Poe when I was very young and uh, Jurassic Park. My first novel that I ever read was like a, it was like this thick. I was in kindergarten and <laughs> she helped me get through it. And it was like Jurassic Park, like the first Jurassic Park. So, and she she wrote a book called Forza Domani, which is a romantic comedy. And I don't know, she's always just been my inspiration. She's always like, um, been like my cheerleader for writing. And that's just something that I think it just stuck with me. You know, she was the type of parent that would always read to me um, at night and, you know, story, you know, just going to sleep with stories in my head and I always wanted to read, wanting to read, and uh, it kind of developed into my writing habit. Okay, number two, how long have I been writing? Forever? Yeah, like forever, um, since I was very little, 
Um, I started writing my own like little book, like pretend book, I mean not stab myself, uh, when I was like in third grade, I think. You know, it was like about a dog. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I would say for a long time. Uh, when did you start writing? I feel like that's the same question, but I'm gonna just say like, when did I start writing professionally? Um, I published my first book, which was a crime fiction in 2014. It took me seven years though to write it, um, just like by going to school, working and getting back to it on and off. Um, I did publish that first book and then I unpublished it. So different pen name, you cannot find it. Next one. Have you ever wanted to be a writer? Yes. What advice would you give a new writer, someone just starting out? This is a good question because I have gone through a lot of different challenges as a writer. So I feel like there is a lot. This is just like a really open-ended question. I feel like there's a lot that I could give a new writer. Um, but maybe it would be don't rush to publish. That's the first mistake that I ever did with that first book. You know, and don't be afraid to find readers, beta readers, to have them critique your novel. Because I feel like when I first started, that was kind of like, first of all, Create Space was the thing that was around. And they charged extra for a beta reader, beta reader service. And it didn't I didn't really know how important it was. And people would tell me things like, Oh, don't let other people read your book before it's published because they might steal it, you know? And all of that stuff is, you know, pretty false. I mean, yeah, there are people who plagiarize out there, but very rarely will it be from a beta reader or a critique partner. And you definitely want to find people who read in your genre to give you advice and grow as a writer. So I think that's probably my first major advice. Besides, of course, getting an editor, you know, and just writing, just starting, just getting on that page and just starting up um, is the beta readers because it'll help you grow. And if in the beginning you can't afford a developmental editor, having that reader feedback will really help you out. All right. I feel like that was a very long winded answer and there's a bunch of these questions. So let me hurry up. How do I handle writer's block? I don't. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> honestly, man, <laughs> if I am on the roll and I am just writing, writing, writing and doing my writing sprints, I don't really get writer's block um, if I'm doing that. If I have to pause, for instance, stopping to pack and move to another country and putting me like a month or two behind on my book, then starting up, that gives me writer's block, I guess. So... The way I combat that is really to read the last few chapters of what I wrote or go back to the beginning if I really have to and then look at my outline and work on my outline. Like try to try to find my place and outline where I was, where I left off. Um, and if all else fails and I really cannot get back into the page because it, just, it takes me a long time to get there then I will, I will take it in breaks and go do something else, go rock climbing, take a bath, paint something, do something else. And while I'm doing those activities and doing all that, my brain is, I'm still thinking about my story. And then I will give myself a designated time to sit down. And I won't go into a sprint right away. I'll just not give myself, you know, a set amount of time which would be like okay let me just write a sentence let me just feel it get back into my character and once i have a few sentences down and i think i got it then i'll hit 30 minutes on the t on the timer and get into a sprint and boom that j that that takes me out of my writer's block problem okay next question what in your opinion are the most important elements of writing Woo! That's a loaded question. I think the reason why I feel like that's a loaded question too is because um, a lot of people have different opinions over what a good, you know, right? Some people might be like, well, it's the pros or well, whatever. Honestly, to me, is your ability to tell a good story. And I don't think you're going to get to that without getting feedback and learning craft. 
you know, um, Save the Cat, I think is a good source for a new writer. And just basically just, just focus on that element of getting your story across. What is your plot? And then, you know, what, what's your who are your characters? What are their internal struggles, your, their wants versus their needs? And where is your story, story going? Everything else, the grammar, the, you know, the prose, all that extra stuff, a lot of readers don't care about it. Um, but that, that stuff comes later. That stuff comes in line editing. So I, I don't suggest going into it into your work taking forever because you want to get the perfect sentence that you take seven years to write a book because you can't get through the first draft because you keep you know thinking about your sentence structures all right next what comes first for me the plot or the characters depends on the book <laughs> i want to say that for this current uh series that i'm working on the plot came first and then came the characters, but once the characters started coming in, I started really focusing on the characters and I really wanted to work on their development. So yeah, I, I think I'd say that it just depends on my idea at the moment on the book. Sometimes I'll have a character and I'll be like, yeah, I really love this character, but I have no idea what the plot is. Or I'll think of like the world building and I'll start there. It, it, it just dep it depends for me. How do you develop your plots and characters see i told you i was buying i'm like how do you develop um i don't even know how to answer that how do we develop them i mean i feel like i've, I've written a couple books so it i kind of just write it in the outline <laughs> i do follow the save the cat beat sheets um, if that answers the question. I'm not sure it does. How do you come up with the titles of your books? <sighs> Girl. All right, well. Um, let's do a little bit more. That's really hard, you know. I don't know. Because with this one, it kind of just came from the story. And I'm still being very secretive over my story. So that's kind of hard. I just talk about the last one. In the Castilian Blood series, at first it started off as a YA series, and then I rewrote books one through three. <laughs> um, yeah, and it became, it, it went from The Haunting of Paradise House, which has a very YA feel, and there was a haunting in the house that the character was working in, which had a name, Paradise House. So it kind of just came together, you know, but it could have been um, the haunting at Tavern, or no, the Tavernier Key haunting, because it also takes place in Tavernier Key. But the Tavernier Key haunting sounds a bit of like an adult horror story instead of like a YA, the haunting at Paradise House. So that changed it. But then when I rebranded it to be um, Escaping Demons, I was rebranding it for a new adult audience, which is ages 18 to like 25. So it, it needed to be more on brand with the genre. So that's important. Yeah, I'm looking at the genre. I'm looking at the tone of the book, um, what the book is. Is there a magical element? Those kinds of things. But... It also has obviously has to be has to do with the story. Like it's not as called escaping demons if there's no demons in the in the books. There are. So <laughs> that um yeah, I think that answered the question. That's how I that's how I do it. Is this a cup? This is way more than a cup. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Next thing in the cookies. Okay, so the next thing is in a bowl, in a large bowl, cream the butter and sugars until lightly fluffy. I will do that over there. So bring this with me. Um, I feel like this is gonna take a long, uh, this is gonna be very loud. So, oops, you know, I'm being kind of backlit. Sorry about that. So let me answer one more question and then I'm going to do that because it's going to be loud. Okay, another, the next question is, 
When did I first consider myself a writer? Hmm. I think I first considered myself a writer when I was working on my very first book because I would, I was in the dorms of FIU at the time and I would take my laptop because I have insomnia. So it would be like one in the morning and I would go to the Dunkin Donuts right across the street and I would sit there and I would write. And it became a habit for me. And I was always the girl with the laptop writing. I wasn't even working on my homework or studying, which I should have been. I was just like in my own head, in my own story. So I would say around then, um, yeah, before publishing my, before even publishing my first book. And I think that's fair. If you are a writer and you haven't even published a book and you write anything in your journal or in your, or, or poems or short stories, it's okay to call yourself a writer. That's what you're doing, you're writing. And you are, believe it or not, still working on your craft, even if you're not like going out to buy a craft book and studying it or taking a, an English class and studying your craft. If you are habitually writing, then you are putting like writing mileage in your brain and you're working on your, you're developing your voice. So you are writing, you're, you're a writer. <laughs> it's okay to consider yourself one. Okay, where are the sugars? <laughs> this is the flour, here's the butter. This cream, the sugars, Ooh, and the butter. That's all light and fluffy. Next question. <laughs> what time of day do I usually write in? Listen, I'm a night owl, I am. But I am trying to get my writing done first thing in the morning before I even have my coffee, just to get myself Boom, in the spirit of writing, get a good 700 to 1,000 words down if possible and start my day off strong. If I write at night, which at the moment it is happening anyways because I'm struggling, I struggle with sleep, guys, um, then my brain will not shut up and I won't sleep and I'll get into that cycle. So I write during the day, preferably starting in the morning. Um, at the moment, I have like 5,000 to 6,000 word count goals daily because I'm behind in this book. Uh, so it takes me a lot longer, which has pushes, has put, has pushes, <laughs> master, um, which has pushed my, all my admin newsletter, all the other marketing stuff in the back burner, which isn't great, but I need to get this book out. So it is what it is for the time being. All right, guys, I am about to make a lot of noise. So I'm just going to get this done real quick, and then I will um, continue the questions. Does that look light and fluffy? I think so. OK, checking the recipe. Beat in the eggs and vanilla. The eggs, how much vanilla? OK, teaspoon. Okay, oh, and the next question, while I do that, the <laughs> describe a typical writing day. Okay, a typical writing day for me is I like to get up, grab a glass of water. I don't even like to make my coffee, like I said before, because it just takes long. It's a process to make a good cup of coffee, at least for me it is. Um, so, and I, I just, I basically just don't want any distractions in my head. I don't even check my phone. I just want to sit down, put on a 30 se uh, 30 minute 30 seconds. <laughs> a 30 minute timer and just write as much as I can in that chapter. And then after that, um if I can, I will go work out. <laughs> Not something that I'm doing right now. I like to get into the habit of working out right after that. Probably have another glass of water uh, cuz I will be hungry. But then after that, I will then have my breakfast and uh, shower, drink my coffee, et cetera, et cetera, before I go back to another writing sprint. So I like to get at least two writing sprints in the morning. And then after that, I can take a little break if I'm feeling up for it. If I still feel like I want to get more writing done, then I'll do another one um, after like a short break. But um, I do break for like admin things like writing a newsletter or creating an Instagram post or, you know, 
just reaching out to my readers in social media or, you know, those kind of things. Or if I'm doing my finances that day, it depends on the day because I have like a schedule for different things. And then I will normally break for lunch and chill out a little bit, watch some YouTube and relax before I do another set of writing sprints. And then at a certain point, I will stop to prepare dinner or sometimes my husband's cooking dinner and I might be getting some more writing in. I know it's like a lot, a lot of writing and it's not exactly that way every single time, but at the moment it is because it's like crunch time for me. So it really depends on like the book that I'm writing or is it crunch time or am I just writing a 2000 word goal a day, that kind of thing. some vanilla, a teaspoon. So I am skipping a few of these questions because I feel like, oh, this is, <laughs> I just bought this. <laughs> I have to take the top off. I mean, the little, you know, the plastic part. Um, I'm just gonna skip a few of these questions because I feel like it is repetitive, like asking me the same thing in different ways. Um, and it's also just going on and on and on <laughs> about more craft stuff. Um, like it's asking me, how much research I do for my books. So I just asked that question, so I guess I'll answer it. And well, it really depends on the book. For my current one that I'm secretive about, but am currently writing, I did a shit ton, ton of research. I'm still doing a shit ton of research. I've done months and months and months of research for this book before I even outlined it because I was working on another series and would just take breaks in that series because I'd get like an epiphany of an idea for this series and then I would stop what I'm doing do some research and put it into my series bible for the future um and then as I'm writing and things come up I still do a lot of research and as I'm almost done with the book things pop up and I still do research so I am not the type of writer that doesn't do research I do a lot of research it also helps that I am an, I am an anthropologist I'm a cultural anthropologist um, and sociologist, and I'm also an archaeologist. I have a master's in environmental archaeology and I work on sites around the world. Why am I saying this? Because I do a lot more research than Googling something and taking the first line that pops up in Google. <sighs> not going to talk about that. Um, but that's just, it's not research for me because that can be misinterpreted most of the time or taken in bits and pieces of you know, fragments of the real research. So it takes it takes a while, but I like to be culturally ac accurate if I am talking about another culture or um, in getting inspired by another culture and drawing from information. Or for instance, I am writing about pirates and I do a lot of research on pirate ships. That was a lot of my research for this series. <laughs> so there you go. I think that answers two of the questions. Let me beat these eggs and I'll be right back. Okay, so I am just skipping around to a different section about my current books. So how many books have I written and which is my favorite? Well, as I mix in the baking soda, baking powder and cinnamon, I have written two children's books, Little Krampus and the Magical Sleigh Ride and Little Krampus and the Christmas Secret, um, as well as, so that's two, as well as Escaping Demons, Lying with Demons, um, Blood of, of Demons, Queen of Demons, Dragons and Demons, and the Reader Magnet Defying Demons. So those are eight books, not counting the one that I published and then unpublished, so that's nine books. And if you really want to like get technical, I did rewrite the first three in the main series of the demons. <laughs> um, and like it was a really, really, really hard rewrite, like from third person past to first person present and like took out POVs, added POVs completely like, I mean, the plot is the same, but a lot is different and the book grew. So if you really want to get technical, you could say 12, but I'm gonna keep it to nine. Which one's my favorite? That's really hard because, um, did they want me to beat this or, do it, or mix it with a spoon? It just says mix well. I'm gonna just do it with a spoon. 
Uh, that's really hard. To, ooh, sorry. Because the categories are very different. Like, I love my little Krampus books. They make me so happy. I have become, like, Madam Lady Krampus. And, like, Halloween and Christmas is my thing. So, I don't know. I love those books a lot. But it's just different. You know, they're in rhyme. They're for kids. Like, little kids. Um, so, I say that those are still, like, my favorite. Um, not make a mess. Um, but okay, so out of my novels, my new adult novels, first of all, I want to say that the current one that I'm writing, which is a YA, is hands down my favorite, but I'm not done yet, and it's not published yet, so am I allowed to say it's my favorite? I don't know. I can say that it's my favorite, right? It's my favorite, but <laughs> if I want to choose, if I need to choose from the ones I've already published then I'm going to say Dragons and Demons because I don't know. I just, it's not, first of all, it's not written to market. My urban fantasy series does like go into these high fantasy areas in Dragons and Demons and Lying with Demons, which is book two, which isn't great for the urban fantasy readership who really likes just the magic on earth. Because what I've written is a portal fantasy. It's urban fantasy, but it's a portal fantasy. But still, Dragons and Demons is still my favorite because I am a sucker for a villain. And in that book, I hated my villain in book two because what he does is atrocious. But when he gets his own story, I just, I just loved him. I, I don't know. You have to read it and find out. Um, there's a review somewhere that says that they want to hug him. And I feel like as an author, if your reader says that they want to hug your, your villain because they feel bad for him, I've done something right. So, yeah. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I did realize, I guess I'm just so distracted at the moment <laughs> since I'm like recording and trying to remember this recipe. I should have chopped these apples a lot more since they're going in cookies duh they're not going to melt um they're going to be chunky so i'm just trying to stab them as i now mix yay hey man i told you i'm not really a baker i do this recipe once a year it'll still be really good though this is a really delicious recipe i am like stabbing this thing now i am attacking it because i did not chop the way I know I should have because I'm distracted <laughs> anyways um yeah so if you want to make this recipe it does say get tart apples I got the I got the green ones because <laughs> I know that they're tart um last year in the UK we actually went to an orchard and I got the apples for it and I just used like these beautiful red apples and they were a little sweet and they were perfect so you don't have to get tart apples like the recipe says um one thing that i failed to remember as well i like to add my little touch of nutmeg that is not included in the recipe so if you like nutmeg go ahead and get it um add it just like a, a pinch um i forgot to grab that at the grocery store so these do not have it but yeah okay see what's next oops the oven just beeped you missed the oven beeping i'm such a great vlogger i'm not um so all right now these are done so i'm just gonna answer a few more questions as i roll these into i'm still kind of stabbing the apples roll these into the cookies <laughs> I also want to mention that this recipe is from the Two Sisters uh, website and I have been using this recipe and also their pumpkin cream cheese recipe. So it's, it's like pumpkin cookies just like these are apple cinnamon cookies and then the frosting is made with icing sugar and cream cheese which I will do next. So highly recommend. Again, I will post them down in the description. I mean, since I've been using them for like the last, like, I don't know, seven or eight years or something, I don't even know <laughs> how long. Um, I thought that like, I should probably share this recipe with people and tell you about it. Yeah. So next question, I skipped down to like the personal questions. 
<clears throat> so the first question and the personal question is, what do I like to do when I'm not writing? Well, I like a lot of stuff. Um, I like to work on my spell craft and write in my book of shadows. I like to cast the runes and read them. Um, I also enjoy rock climbing and caving, and I love to paint, which I haven't done since I moved. Um, I literally have like everything in boxes. This is gonna be a very big cookie. <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Um, oh yeah, I have a lot of things in boxes coming. I have like a small apartment. I don't know if you've watched your the other videos, but if you go over and find like the starting of the vlog videos, you will see that I have like 27 or 28 boxes coming in from the UK into this very small apartment. Yes, I will get storage, but um, stab that one more. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, painting, <laughs> like arts and craft. Um, painting with a twist is always fun to do. And I love adventures. Um, I also, you know, have my other career as an archaeologist. I haven't gotten, I haven't really looked into getting onto any sites yet because, again, since we just moved, we don't have a car yet, and in archaeology, you need a car. Next question. What did I want to be when I grew up? When I was little, I wanted to be a paleontologist. And then I grew up and became an archaeologist. <laughs> I still love paleontology. This is a very, very apple uh, concentrated. I, I, I messed up with with the chopping of the apples. That one's not, that one's not gonna be great. Um. <laughs> well, it says, what would you rather be eating? And then the next question is, what's my favorite food? Um, the answer to those two things is sushi. Sushi is my favorite food. What is the best part of my day? That's an interesting question. The best part of my day is when I start off my day with a handsome word count. <laughs> and my handsome husband, of course, who is probably listening from the bedroom, waiting for me to respond to that one. But no, uh, really, when I, you know, it, it, a good day to me is starting off with a very strong word count and, and I'm very happy. All right, you want to see? All right, that's better. These apples, like I said before, are a lot chunkier than I normally uh, make them, but I don't know what happened to me today. They're big chunks. That'll be fine. They'll be okay. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick these in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'm going to make the icing and I will skip down to some more interesting questions. I'll be right back. husband just built this very pretty cat tree while I was baking and he is really enjoying it right now look at this Ollie we have to move it to the wall we can't move it with you on here <laughs> So the cookies are done. Well, they're out of the oven. Um, I, am, I am waiting for them to cool. And then I will put the icing, which as you saw, is also done. So, okay, I have never used one of these before. So this is gonna be interesting. 
Um, so I think that while we are waiting for that to cool, I am going to go sit on the couch and answer some more questions. And I'm back with a crooked camera. All right, that should be fine. Okay, so some of these questions are really weird and I'm gonna skip them. So, and mix them up as I go. So, <laughs> what's my favorite holiday? Well, if you haven't guessed that already, it is Halloween. Um, my favorite artist and favorite song. Okay, I haven't really thought of what my favorite song was since I was a little kid and I think I forgot what that was too. So I don't think I have a favorite song. As far as favorite artist goes, I like a variety of different music genres. So right now I really like Barnes Courtney. Um, his song Glitter and Gold and another one called Fire. Those are really, really good. I love them. Um, one of my favorite bands of all time is, uh, its name is Crew Shadows and it is dark wave, kind of goth alternative uh, rock. Um, I love Peter Grundy. That's like my favorite modern composer on YouTube. If you haven't checked him out, check him out, Peter Grundy. If you like that dark classical music, so good, love it. Let's see, what else? Share something your readers wouldn't know about you. I mean, I did share about the nystagmus in my eye <laughs> earlier. I don't think that's very interesting. Um, I did mention that I go caving, or you know that I'm into spelunking. I grew up with my karate teacher, and I've taken karate since I was four years old. I kind of quit, not in, not like intentionally, when I was 18 and joined the army, but. I've practiced on my own since then. Um, in England, I tried to join a dojo, but they had weird schedules, weird times, and like different locations. It was just kind of hard for me to join one uh, without a car and stuff. So I just trained on my own. So yeah, into that. Um, I am pagan. Uh, ah, here. I can get into that here. I follow the path of the runes. I did a traditional learning with a with a rune master where I was initiated into becoming a vitki which is basically like a young mistress of the rune someone who is learning the runes and until so I became a rune master or mistress <laughs> um, myself and yeah it's more of a philosophy than just being able to use it as a divination you have to learn to cast it to breathe it to will it um, and live by it. So that's like my main path. But I also follow Thelema, Alistair Crowley. Um, and I have a tattoo on my leg. If I could like show you that. <laughs> Which, um, basically stands for do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law so that's anything that you put your intention your mind into you will have the inertia of the universe to assist you and it goes do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law love is the law love is your will so as long as you don't harm anybody while you're doing it you will succeed and there's, there's a lot of philosophy to go into that as to why you will succeed because you don't have ill will towards others because it um, impedes you from succeeding if you have negativity constantly in your subconscious. So anyway, a little too philosophical and deep from there. So um, yeah, that is something the readers wouldn't know about me. <laughs> Let's see what else. These are some fun ones and then I'm gonna end it so that I could pipe some frosting onto my cookies and show the reveal. Yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, would you rather, I think I want to do like two of these because the other ones are kind of weird. Would you rather be in a room full of snakes or a room full of spiders? What do you think I would rather be in? For those who know me know that I have a pet snake and know that I hate spiders. I am an arachnophobic. Um, I do have a character that is a spider in my current book 
and it was like an attempt to get myself to no longer be afraid. I'm not really sure it's working because the spider that I have in my mind is really cute <laughs> and very pretty. If I were to see it come alive, I'm not sure if I would um, have the same sentiments. So yeah, I would definitely rather be in a room full of snakes. <laughs> would you rather have an endless summer or an endless winter? How about an endless fall? Can I choose that? Cause like I'm in Florida and summers here are all year round. So I'd say that I have an endless summer, but I guess I made my choice because England was too cold for me. So I would not want an endless winter. I would really enjoy an endless fall though. <laughs> would you rather have a constant nagging pain or a constant itch? Okay, so you know that's why I said only two of these because that to me is a weird question. Why is that even on here? How about neither? I don't even know how to answer that question. Would you rather always be an hour early or be constantly 20 minutes late? I'd rather always be an hour early because at least I can read or use my time to write. Would you rather live in a haunted mansion or live in an unhaunted cottage? <laughs> Alright guys. <laughs> It's me. I would definitely rather live in a haunted mansion. Obviously. Duh. And or hello. <laughs> Here are some fun either or ones. Tea or coffee? Coffee. But I do like tea. Hot or cold? Hot. Movie or book? Book. Obviously. But I do enjoy watching a movie every now and then. Morning person or night owl? Pretty sure I mentioned I'm a night owl once or twice. Shower or bath? I prefer baths because I like to soak in bath bombs and body melt, uh, bath melts, but I mean, usually I just take a shower because time to go. City or country? I like in between. I enjoy both, but I, I come from a big city. I come from Miami and then I moved away and I don't want to move back to that big city life. So I, I, like, I like best of both worlds. Social media or book? Sorry guys, despite me being on YouTube and Googleable and, and you can po possibly find me everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'ma say book. Paperback or ebook? This one I'm ashamed of. Not that there's anything wrong with ebook, I'm just saying I've always enjoyed a nice paperback so that I can like relax on the couch and turn off the uh, screen to give my eyes a rest. But I have been finding it that I have been addicted to my phone and I can fly through an ebook in like two days and it'll take me more than a month to get through a paperback. Because it's like at my bedside table and when I'm trying to go to sleep and I don't want to think about my world building, if I start reading a book at that time, it's not going to happen. But since I was on my phone, anywhere I go, I can just start reading it while I'm in line until I get through it. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. And that's it. Those are all of the questions that I have um, picked and chosen from. Because <laughs> if not, there's like hundreds of questions here. So, and yeah, so I wasn't going to do all of those. And besides, some of those were kind of strange to ask or answer. So, all right. I'm going to get to piping and then show you the reveal. Haha! -ha. Here they are! to eat it. Ooh, the cinnamon, hold on. 
Okay, okay, okay. Reveal. The new reveal. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me put it down. Ta-da! The lighting sucks, I'm sorry, but yes, here they are. The autumn cookies, the Maybon cookies. And again, you can find the recipe down below. Um, so that is it for this video. I am definitely going to take a bite out of one of these. Mmm, mm-hmm. The apple is definitely tart. It's good though. It's very good. Highly recommend this recipe. I make it every year. The consistency came out a little bit different this time. Like, I used whipped butter. I think it's just a little bit more airy. <laughs> I am not talking with my mouth full on camera. Um, so yeah, it'll come out a little bit different. Um, I've used sweeter apples before, and I think I like those better. But if you are the more tart apple per uh, type of person, then you'll love this. And if you use the whipped butter, I guess it comes out more um, airy than chewy. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> but anyways, highly recommend. Do check it out. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please do follow me on social media. Down below you will find the recipe to these um, cinnamon apple cookies as well as the interview questions if you ever want to take a video like this or interview an author. They are also down there. And if this is the first time you heard of me, then you can find the first book in my Castidian Blood series, New Adult Urban Fantasy, for free. It's called Escaping Demons, so go ahead. And also if you want to find demons, that is also free for joining my mailing list. <laughs> that was all a mouthful. So I will bid you farewell and so will Oliver. <laughs> all right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.